everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Beast Boxing Turbo. Obviously, this is not beatboxing turbo because we already know I'm the world champion of that, and it would just be a waste of our goddamn time. I will save you the injustice of having listened to me make awful percussive noises with my mouth. In any case, video games, right? This is, um, this is Punch Out. It's out on Steam, but instead of, you know, fighting boxers that all have weird, vaguely racist and stereotypical themes, uh, it's like a monster boxing league. It's a game, again, I can't stress enough, heavily inspired by Punch Out. It's been on my radar for a while. I know that, um, I, I saw another YouTuber named Critical cover this like six months ago, but it just came out on Steam a couple of weeks ago. My guess is that this came through the green light process, and uh, you know what's worth noting? It's five bucks, real cheap. Uh, you know, relative to what normally is the cost of games that come out on Steam. And I think the price is right on this one because this seems, strikes me as a, a pretty short experience, but one that is not wholly without merit. So why don't we just, um, I'll start with an exhibition match here, uh, which will hopefully allow me to discuss the mechanics of the game without getting my ass kicked too hard. So we are, uh, basically, we got kind of like a Mulan type story going on here. You can see on the left side there, we are that lady, and we're, we want to become the world champion monster be beast boxer. It's a surprisingly difficult tongue twister to say. Um, so the problem is that humans are discriminated against in this, you know, futuristic alternate history. So we have to don a monster mask, which is why we kind of look like this, you know, weird little grasshopper demon type lady uh, up at the very top. Again, it's like Mulan, except, the, you know, no Donny Osmond singing I'll Make a Man Out of You. But in any case, we work our way up through a ladder the same way you would do in a game like, say, Punch-Out. Why don't I go up against, um, maybe Steve will be a good person to fight. What kind of a skeleton name is Steve, anyway? Um, this will allow me to hopefully earn some money and also demonstrate the very simple mechanics of the game without getting beaten too hard. Because, you know, like Punch-Out, this is a game, first off, obviously the Northern Lion drinking game for this is take a drink every time I mention the, the name Punch-Out. Um, but, uh, the, the mechanics of this game are very similar to what they are in Punch-Out. Basically, we're fighting against enemies, we have a very simple, uh, set of attack patterns here. We can do, uh, a jab. As you can see, we can do a jab followed by a cross, as you can see right there. And by moving side to side and choosing the appropriate punch button, we can also do, uh, hooks. And we can do uppercuts. So there are special attacks as well, but we've got to kind of get to that point first. So the early phases of the game for anybody who has spent a reasonable amount of time uh, playing perhaps a more difficult retro boxing game, which shall not be named, are extraordinarily easy. A lot of, I wouldn't necessarily say button mashing, but uh, it, it's fairly easy to figure out the enemy patterns and uh, succeed as a result of that. What's kind of unique is that this does take a, uh, like the fighting game style for the structure of the game. So uh, it's divided into, or each match is divided into rounds, and in order to win the match, you have to win uh, two, two out of the three rounds that you fight. Uh, so let me just move around here. Obviously, it, what differentiates this, uh, primarily from the game that shall not be named is that, uh, you're not just, like, stationary. Oh my god, I'm gonna win already. Oh, never mind, he's gonna come back to life here. I've already tapped myself out with respect to energy here, but, um... What was I going to say? Uh, you, you're not stationary, so you're not just staying in one place and deciding whether to, you know, block or dodge to one of the sides. Uh, instead, you have kind of full movement laterally over the course of the entire boxing ring, or over the scope of the entire boxing ring. Which, in a weird way, is one of the complaints I have about the game relative to something like Punch-Out, because... Uh, in Punch-Out, it's basically... I, I don't want to make myself seem like an idiot. I played a ton of Super Punch-Out. Uh, I have never beaten the original Punch-Out. I've never played the Wii version of Punch-Out or the, the reboot. Um, but it's almost like a rhythm game in some ways. Because basically you just kind of hang out, hang out, hang out. Memorize the patterns of your enemy. As they come in, you counter and then you go back to your stationary position and you get ready to execute the pattern again, if that makes sense. You have a lot more freedom. I'll do another exhibition match here quickly. Um, you have a lot more freedom in Beast Boxing Turbo. And in some ways this kind of takes away from the experience, I think, because I find I spend a lot of time on the offensive, and in a weird way, that's kind of a negative relative to Punch-Out, because it, what, what I really like about, uh, you know, again, that game, is that uh, you spend almost all of your time on the defensive, and then unleash, like, a flurry of shots, and then if you do that consistently, you'll manage to beat even the most difficult of enemies. I'll explain what's going on with my gloves being on fire here, by the way, in a second. Um, but I, I guess we'll get to talk more about my deeper criticisms like that uh, as we get a little bit further on. We still have a little bit of mechanic stuff to talk about here. So, uh, you may be noticing that kind of uh, on fire boxing glove icon down in the bottom left. This is basically like our special- Oh no! That almost got me hurt pretty bad there. This is our special meter and the way that this builds up is by landing uh, successive shots. So what uh, my strategy primarily has been so far, and it's worked out extremely well for me, is to maybe go in for like one quick flurry of shots, that builds up half of the meter, and then go in for uh, one more quick flurry of shots immediately after that and uh, 
eventually that'll build it up. Because you don't actually have to get the combo built in one uh, fell swoop. Ooh, almost got hit there. Um, you don't have to get the combo built in one fell swoop. As long as you don't get hit, then it'll stay active. The other way that it gets... Um, uh, that it gets diminished is if you actually get punched yourself. So mostly you just want to avoid taking hits. One of the complaints I do have about the game, and you're probably noticing this a little bit, is that it's real easy. I'm, I'm playing on the normal difficulty level. There are no other difficulty levels above that. Uh, but I have just a little bit over an hour and a half played of the game, and I've almost completed it on normal as far as I can tell. So I should probably, you know, and whenever I go like, oh, this game's too easy and there's difficulty settings, there's always people that are like, oh, just crank it up to hard. And I'm like, yes, okay, I guess I could, but um, it, at the same time, like, I've already made it halfway through the game on normal. I kind of don't want to do, like, that precipitous of a incline in our difficulty. I don't know. Uh, on normal difficulty, if you are a fan of games like this, it's probably going to be a little bit too easy for you. Is maybe just the, the last thing I'm most comfortable saying there. Uh, so you saw a couple of battles there. There's not too much more to say about the mechanic side of the game. Uh, as you can see, those fights went down pretty quickly. Why don't we uh, make our way through the campaign mode of the game, which is largely pretty gosh darn similar. So basically, we started at our day job, and then we're, we're making it through like successive leagues. Uh, and this is like our Rocky IV kind of training montage here, where we've, we've gotten to the top of the Pro League, but in order to get to the Ultra League, which I guess is like the Super Elite, uh, then we have to complete our training up here on Monstrella Mountain. Admittedly, uh, as I've gotten a little bit further into the game, it's become a little bit more difficult. So we may actually find ourselves in kind of a tough spot here. Uh, the, the, as you can see, it, it, this does have the... Oh, that's gonna hurt a lot. Uh, as you can see, this does have the kind of punch-out style where... Well, first off, look at the enemy faces when you hit them in the head. That is totally punch-out. And anyway, by the way, I'm not saying this is a rip-off of punch-out, and even if I was, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. There are so few games like this that I'm actually totally still into it. Like, as much as I've, I've kind of compared this unfavorably to that game, uh, over the course of this video so far. Uh, at the same time, I still think this game is pretty okay. I don't think it's necessarily a must-purchase or anything like that. Uh, but but I do think this is the kind of... If you're a fan of a game like that, then you might be able to find a, you know, a couple of hours of diversion here, though. Um, it, it's a little bit feature barren, and the campaign mode is a little bit... Uh, I don't know, dry might be a way to put it, which is ironic as I fight a turkey here this close to Thanksgiving. Ironic is probably not the right word, but... Come at me, Alanis Morissette haters. Uh, but that being said, you know, for five bucks, you know, basically the price of a, of a Subway sandwich, it's, it's a pretty good analogy to a Subway sandwich. It may not, uh, change your life, but at the very least it'll get you through a difficult afternoon, I, and I say that from experience. Uh, let's just continue moving on here. Major complaints are that, at least at this level, and again, this is, we're probably approaching like two-thirds of the way through the campaign here, some of these scummy tactics just consistently work out. And I would have really preferred if the enemies were a little bit more aggressive, because, as it is right now, you know, they pretty much just kind of wait around for you to do your attacks. And I, I like responding to their attacks more than I like actually just hitting them with a flurry of punches, which doesn't feel that satisfying. It kind of feels like I'm button, button mashing and succeeding uh, with it, which is fine. Or not fine, sorry, which is kind of annoying. Um, there's a little bit of a, a story going on here, which is not particularly that interesting. You know, the, the storytelling in this game really reminds me of another game, uh, Sequence. And I don't know if uh, it's made by the same developers, but it does have kind of a similar art style as well, though the gameplay is totally different. So every time we beat a mission or, a, you know, a, a canonical next fighter, we get another tutorial. So the tutorial, tutorial here is final tips. I'm not here to just train you, Sonny. You're good enough. Just remember, they're just going to give you a final overview to remember when fighting the best. Keep dodging and blocking. Check for patterns and also get those streaks to go on fire. Okay. Uh... So that she didn't even train me at all. She was just like, remember your training. Well, you know, it, I beat you in like 10 seconds, so it should be easy enough. Another thing that's a little bit weird and unsatisfying is that um, there is like an RPG element to the game to a certain extent where after you beat an enemy, you get a certain amount of money and you can use this money to train yourself. Uh, but you seem to get an awful lot of money per mission, like enough to level up uh, multiple times. Uh, in basically every single discipline. We'll just let our money come down here and see if we have any more to give. But, you know, the, like, it's already fairly easy, and this just seems to make it uh, a little bit easier as well uh, to be able to just crank up your stats. Well, on the I need to, if I have another 150, I need to at least get 69% block here. Uh, so, in a weird way, you know, in a, you know, I, I hate to mention Punch-Out for like the 19th time, but in Punch-Out, a game that this is clearly inspired by, uh, the way that you improve in the game is simply through your own skill, whereas I feel like, you know, from like the second mission or the second fight onwards in Beast Boxing Turbo, uh, I had already kind of gotten to a level of adequacy where I was mostly just carried by getting stat increases, which is kind of shitty, uh, and in a weird way, kind of flies in the face of, uh, 
you know, the, the kind of pattern recognition necessary to normally beat a game like this. But anyway, maybe I'll get my uh, shit rocked by this boss, and then I will feel slightly different about things. I, as far as I can tell, I have not lost a single fight in Beast Boxing Turbo so far. I've been knocked out a couple of times. This guy has, like, a vagina for a, a tree mouth. Anyway, um, talking about some positives of the game, I really think... Oh, Jesus. Uh, I really think that the, uh, the game looks pretty good. I'm actually getting pooped on here. I actually think the game looks pretty good. Uh, the, the character models in particular have kind of like a neat, uh, cartoony style to them, which I like a lot. It's not the best game I've, or best looking game I've ever seen in my entire life, but, uh, I do think it looks pretty good. I should probably start blocking as I move past Hitmonchan here, because whenever I cross his path, he tries to get a, an easy shot in on me. The structure of, the, of these fights is pretty similar every single time. My strategy of build up uh, the fire meter and then let it loose has, has not failed me, at least as far as I can remember. But this guy does a ton of damage. You know, it does the punch out thing where as you get further and further, enemies do um, not only like harder and harder combos to block, uh, but also uh, they, they do more damage with each successive punch. You might have seen something there. Oh, that was a really bad uh, kind of flame combo there. Um, it's not really called a flame combo, but because my gloves were on fire, that's what I'm going to call it. it. It also has this kind of weirdly unsatisfying element, and you can probably see it right there. Enemies have like a pretty w long wind-up time on their unblockable attacks. Uh, and this leads to some like absurd looking situations where they charge up, and because you have such freedom of movement, you just like completely move out of the way. Like, can you imagine if you were watching this as a spectator, and this guy does this, and then I just move to the other side of the field and just like look straight ahead? Field is not the right word, but that should tell you how much I know about boxing. Um, it, which is just, it leads to some funny looking situations, in my opinion. That being said, this is a much more difficult fight than we've seen so far. I, I would have preferred it, honestly, if it had aped punch out a little bit harder and just kept you completely stationary. Because the footwork stuff, I find, is a little scummy. It makes it really easy to just kind of move around the, the, the ring here. And I guess I was thinking about how to uh, pronounce the, or, you know, adequately classify the actual name of the uh, arena that boxers fight in. So we're basically even here. I'm going to wait for, his name is really Tree Man. I kind of like that. I guess I'm just slightly off center here. I guess I'm just slightly off center here. Oh, and now he goes, he's scared of me, I think. Oh, that one didn't work. One of these days I'm going to connect with a punch. This is a little strange. This has never happened to me before. Now, this guy's got in impenetrable defense, apparently. Oh, I'm so close to killing him. It employs kind of like the same kind of knockout, well, not knockout kings, what is it called now? Fight Night style of, um, of health, where, you know, as you hit them, their, their green, oh, shit, I got knocked out. Their green health goes down, which is like actually their... Uh, the amount of health that needs to go to zero for them to die and then their red health goes down as well Which is like the the health that they will not be able to regenerate and then there's a black space Which represents the distance between the two and this this can be regenerated under the right circumstances, so uh, I actually lost that last round so basically fuck me for saying that uh, Game's too easy, but we'll see if we can't recover from that Again like the movement stuff. I, I well, here's what I think it, it makes it a little bit too easy to uh, be safe, if that makes sense. Like, normally, you play a game like this that uh, shall not be named, and someone, like an enemy, gets ready to do their uh, incredible attack that will basically knock you out if you don't block it or get out of the way. If you move out of the way, like, even a second too early, uh, then you find yourself basically in a, an indefensible position. However, in this, when you see them wind up for their attack, you can basically just go to the other side of the arena, which is... Uh, a little strange to me, shall we say. That being said, uh, my complaints about the difficulty appear to have fallen on deaf ears. The game certainly hasn't realized it. But we are seeming to get kind of like a weird little uh, hit detection concern here. But this is the first time I've noticed it over the course of this game. Alright, I gotta focus for a second. Fuck the, the criticisms for now. Just gotta pay attention and get my meter built up. Oh yeah, there we go, okay. So once you get your meter built up, you just gotta hope that... Uh, he doesn't do exactly what he did there, which is block your attacks. The enemies, you know, they are purported to have, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say emergent AI, but they're supposed to learn from your attacks, and if you do uh, the same attack too many times in a row, they'll start to defend it. So, maybe my strategy, once I get the, the gloves on fire combo, of just consistently throwing uh, jabs and crosses is not necessarily supposed to work, but uh, it's kind of getting the job done there. We managed to knock him out very, very quickly. And again, that vaginal tree mouth on his stomach is kind of freaking me out a little bit here. So let's try to get the kill here, uh, and while we do, I'll, I'll talk overall about my impressions of uh, Beast Boxing Extreme Turbo. I can't remember if it has extreme in it, but it just seems like the kind of game that would. Uh, I, I certainly don't think this is a must-play game. That being said, as much as I've talked about this aping Punch-Out, I really love Punch-Out, and I love Punch-Out enough 
uh, that, you know, this game wears its inspiration on its sleeve, and I'm totally cool with that. It, it's not nearly as good uh, as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out or uh, Super Punch-Out. And if you haven't played those, maybe I would encourage you to uh, do that instead. Uh, that being said, if you are a fan of those games and you're looking for something that's a little bit similar, uh, might make you kind of long for uh, the original, but is otherwise pretty inoffensive and actually yeah, even fun and, and somewhat challenging at times, but it does lack that kind of like really satisfying pattern recognition element that the uh, the, the Punch-Out games have. Uh, check out Beast Boxing Turbo. The, the most positive thing I can say about it, and this is not necessarily heady praise, is that it's very inoffensively priced at five dollars. This, if this, if this was a fifteen dollar game, um, I think people would have cause to be you know, fairly justifiably angry might not be the right word, but uh, indignant to a certain extent. But at five bucks, this is, um, you know, basically in the cheapest kind of price bracket on Steam, and I, and I think that's uh, exactly where it belongs. And I don't necessarily mean that offensively, but it, it's a game that doesn't seem to me to have that much depth, doesn't seem to have that much uh, gameplay associated with it, but if you're looking for something to spend an afternoon with, this could be a candidate. That being said, certainly this is this is far from the best game I've played this year, uh, and we're going to get the knockout punch there, which is almost a, a fitting kind of time for this to happen. In any case, let's exit out here. Uh, that was a surprisingly difficult fight, but once I started to focus, it actually turned out to not be that difficult. You're doing a good job so far, but if you're going up against the last two, you better be ready. If it's just too much, do some exhibition matches and buy new upgrades and gear. Honestly, I think I'm okay. Are you really asking me to change the difficulty down after I haven't lost an entire fight this whole time? Whatever, okay. Uh... In any case, yes, I will go back to the main menu here. This is Beast Boxing Turbo, available on Steam. There will be a link in the video description below. Not necessarily uh, a hearty recommendation to pick it up, but uh, if you're the kind of person who would be into this, and you probably know if you are at this point, uh, then maybe I would encourage you to do so. Like I said, the price is right, and this could be uh, an interesting way to spend an afternoon or, you know, maybe an hour on stream or something like that. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, make sure to click the like button. It helps me out a great deal. And of course... Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more first impressions like this in the future. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.